What's up, y'all? Got a banger from the Modern King. Let's get straight into it. Anybody trying to date me? My bills or your bills? So no. And here we have another individual who has confused the rules of dating with the rules of marriage. Yeah. I don't care whose car it is. You're trying to date me. You're trying to take a load off of me. Exactly when did dating come to mean taking the load off of someone financially? And here I thought dating was just about getting to know someone. When did that definition change? So my car is your car. You no, cover ain't. the bills. I don't. No, well, that's, that's the not... thing. Well, if, if if your car's my car, then your coochie's my coochie, right? Shots fired. That's mine. Shots fired. Look, you want a carrot? Free. Sit. Wait. Free. Free. Go to your place. That's the way it should be, right? But we'll see. Not what that means. If a person is just dating, no. Their property is still their property, and their responsibilities are still only theirs. It's not the other person's responsibility. And why are you entitled to somebody else's stuff? ...to financially take care of that person. Simple. You're trying to date me, so my bills are your bills. Period. But the simplest thing of all is that individual... And what I love is all these women are alone. <laughs> Completely alone. <laughs> Talking about my bills or your bills. <laughs> Keep paying your own bills and just hush. Individuals with this particular thought process aren't going to end up being the most unhappy because the individuals that they find that are actually willing to support them financially just when they're dating and not when they're married are going to be the ones that they're the most unhappy with because they have the lowest levels of self-esteem and self-worth and they're going to find themselves wondering where are all the real men at while the real men are the ones that won't put up with this type of behavior Thanks. people with this thought process end up with cats instead of a husband I hope the cats she will end up with pay her bills because I know no man will. Yeah. Men who have taken a break from dating, what positive changes have you experienced? You ask a great question, so let's talk about it. And ladies, let's be clear. Unlike the panda bears, I'm going to tell you what you need to hear. Panda bears. Not what you want to hear. First, men save a ton of money. Money that they can then invest in themselves rather than wasting it on expensive dates trying to meet the ridiculous expectations, oh, sorry, high standards that today's women have. Next, they have more time and energy. Trying to date today is mentally, physically, and emotionally exhausting for men. Men have found that Thanks. by walking away, they can go do things that they enjoy instead of wasting hours swiping right on dating apps or trying to get the attention of women, most of whom think that they're entitled to attend when at best they themselves are three, four, or five. And finally, when men give up on dating and relationships, they find the one thing that they want more than anything else. The thing they rarely, if ever, get in relationships with women. They find peace and happiness. The bottom line, ladies, is this. You can keep doing what you're doing, blaming men for anything and everything, or you can take responsibility for your actions. Acknowledge that. that your expectations of perfection are completely absurd, and take accountability for the way you've mistreated Oof. men all these years. The choice A lot of buzzwords these women are, especially these modern women, very allergic to accountability. E. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ours, but let's responsibility. Be Ooh. Very clear, ladies. Until you decide to choose the latter, the reality is more and more men will continue to walk away, and the likelihood that you'll end up alone Facts. is only going to increase. My man preaching. If anyone tells me she's getting a divorce, I'm going to say congratulations. And here's why, why is it always the hoop earring? It's always the hoop earring that's the dead giveaway. Because I know that this decision was not made in haste. That she has tried everything to make it work. She got something in her teeth. Over the last couple days, I've talked to hundreds of thousands of women. Stop the cap. And I've asked In the them, last couple days, you've talked to hundreds of thousands of women. Just stop, bro. How long was it between when you emotionally checked out of your marriage to when you filed for divorce? And what was happening in between that time? And the average was three to five years of emotionally checking out. Let me out. see the study. Where's the numbers? Where's this mumbo jumbo? Where was this? Where was this study done? Harvard, TikTok, <laughs> Instagram. Before actually filing for divorce, so women don't just wake up on a random Wednesday morning and decide, you know what, I'm going to divorce my husband today. According to you, they emotionally check out three to five years ago, yet say nothing 
and don't try to fix it. Facts. Next, he's going to mention being happy as an excuse. Because happy women don't leave good marriages. Happy women don't... Wait, 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 wait. Happy women don't leave good marriages, but aren't those women involved in those marriages? And don't marriages usually take place between two people? So, in essence, if a marriage isn't good, you're contributing to the not goodness of the marriage. So, isn't it your fault? How does that make sense? A good marriage. You're contributing to the marriage, right? Because it takes two people to get married. So, if it's not good, then you need to take some responsibility for it not being good. That makes absolutely no sense. Stupid. So stupid. Stupid. Don't leave good husbands. They do all the time. But it's so dumb. Why? Because they want something new, not because their husbands aren't good. They want to good. feel special. This is also why so many more women are filing for divorce than men. Because men can stay. Men can stay because they're still benefiting. Because especially if they have kids, the wife is still stepping up and caring for the house. She's caring for the kids. Men stay because men don't get divorced and tear the family apart Thanks. just because they're not happy. I find it hilarious, she says, only men benefit from marriage. But in her own scenario, the husband pays for everything while the wife takes care of the kids, which is mutually beneficial and not one-sided, like she's trying to make it sound. It sounds like she wants the husband to do everything while the wife can do whatever she wants. Yeah, exactly. And someone explain to me what it is that men get in return for being a providing man. I'm talking about the men that show up emotionally. Unlimited kooka. <laughs> I want the house clean. I want you cooking all the meals. I want you rubbing my back when I'm ready to go to sleep, rubbing my feet after a long day. You're doing everything to make, make this house a home. Balls empty, stomach full, peace and quiet. That's what we want. What, what three things do you want? Let me know in the comments. I think those are the three right there. Keep your balls empty, your stomach full, and some peace and quiet. That's really all men want. Physically, financially, and never complain because they take pride in providing for the woman in their life. It actually makes them feel good to see the women in their lives happy. What do they get in return other than these narcissistic, nagging, controlling women? These women will put everything on the internet. Outfit of the day goes on the internet. Relationship in trouble, go to the internet. Dating advice, go to the internet. Horrible dating scene, go to the internet. Mm -hmm. What is it that these women are giving in return if they don't want to cook, they don't want to clean, they don't want to have children, they don't want to give anything in return other than simply existing and looking pretty. And the majority of women are not even attractive enough to be having a laundry list of expectations. Let's Preach. just be f***ing for real. You Ooh. take off the filters, you take off the Botox, you take the lip filler away, you take the lashes away. You have not an attractive woman, or at least not a 10 out of 10 like I these women have their inflated egos. So you get to be treated like shit. You get to be called narcissistic if you have money. She's going to call you broke. She's going to pretend that she's like this victim, but behind the scenes, you're providing for her while she sits on her phone and seeks attention from other men. So tell me, what is the incentive for these men to continue to provide for these women who do nothing but shit on them all day long? And then if they actually decide to commit to these women because these women love to put on a show and know how to fake a good personality to get the ring or get the bag... And he actually runs the risk of losing everything that he works so hard for. These women are not worth paying for submission. So make it make sense. What is it that incentivizes a providing man to continue to look for a good woman? Number one, you should be dating multiple men. You need to be dating two, two. She's a runner. She's a track star. Tell us about your bop lore, honey. Let's hear it. Three men baseline. Okay. Let me tell you why. POV. You were in a relationship with a guy for three years. It didn't work out. It took you two years to get over that relationship. When you hit the streets now, baby, you're five years in a deficit, okay? You don't even know what you like. You don't even know what's outside. You need to know what you like. Day young, day up. You sound like a single mom. <laughs> I'm going to keep it a buckatron. You just sound like a single mom. Oh, day tall, day short. 
try your hand at it, baby. You need to go outside. You need to date to learn what you like. The second reason why you need to date multiple men is because we don't care. This isn't satire. <laughs> This is genuine advice that they it's give each other. Horrible, horrible then advice. Then they wonder why they end up single. For some odd reason, divorced or single women tend to give the most destructive advice. And when they end up just like the people they got their advice from, they ask, where are all the good men? Mm -hmm. Men are the problem. Every single woman I know has a vision for the future, knows what they want out of life. You ask a woman where she sees herself in 10 years, she has an idea. Men, on the other hand, ask a man where he sees himself in 10 years. He doesn't know. Ask him if he wants a relationship. He doesn't know. Ask him if he sees himself having kids. He doesn't know. And I know people are going to be like, that's a lifestyle. Not everyone has to want kids. Oh, I'm not talking about men who say, I don't want to get married or have kids. I'm talking about the men who, I don't know, maybe... 35 years old, figure it out. What do you want? You live in your brain 24 seven and you don't even know what you want. News flash: going out four nights a week, binge drinking is shallow and empty and meaningless. It's not a life. It can be a phase in your life. We're talking about 40 year old men who've just done that for the past two decades. Get it together. If you enjoyed this video. <laughs> Uh, this would be a good litmus test here. The majority of people that are on this channel are men. Let me know, guys. Do you have a 10-year plan? I mean, I do. I want to own multiple properties. I'd love to have some kids. And I would love to be working for myself at that time. That'd be great, right? I think that's a good enough 10-year plan. Now, do I have it every day planned out? No. But I've got a good forecast of what I want to do. Let me know in the comments. Do you guys have a 10-year plan of what you'd like to do? I'm almost, I almost biggity bet you that most of you guys have a plan of one day what you would like to do. And if not, I bet you're still working, doing something right now to maybe one day work on that plan. You don't have to have everything figured out. Here's what I don't get is a lot of these women think that, that men are lazy if they don't have their 10 year, 20 year plan planned out. Here's the thing, you're single and alone. She's a runner, she's a track star. Clearly you haven't had a plan of how you're gonna get a man, which is why you're alone. And then at the end of the day, dude, misery loves company and single women keep women single. I'm gonna tell you guys a story real quick. I have a good buddy of mine. Um, he got married really young. He's like 20 or 21. Got with this girl. They were kind of like college sweethearts, whatever you want to call it. But they got married, right? Really super young. They were married for about a decade. Right at the tail end of this, his wife started getting like an education and was going to go work in a certain field. And she was going to make much more money than him. As soon as she got her degree, as soon as she got a job, she started cheating on him. And then eventually got away from him and, you know, got a divorce. It's the saddest thing. This is why I say, man, like you need to go out there and find some way to make a, a good bit of money. The world we live in today is brutal. But the thing is, I think as a man, you need to be focused on your back. Number one, because it makes your life a whole lot easier. Stop thinking about money as money and think about it as freedom units. You want to make enough money so you can get away and do your own thing. I'm sure a lot of you guys that watch the channel right now don't want to work. Maybe you love working. Maybe you like working on, you know, working at a certain company or doing a certain thing. But at the end of the day, if you're working for someone else, you're working on somebody else's dream. I hope every one of you guys has something that you want to work in, work on on your own. And it's something that you have a dream of working on, right? But it's just funny to me because when, when women go out in the market and they make money, they're like, I'm independent. I don't need a man. I can do it on my own. But guys, we go out there and make money. We're like, ah, now we can provide for a family. Now I can have kids. Now I can have that house with the white picket fence. It's just a completely different mindset. When women make money, they become individuals. When men make money, they want to have a collective around them. They're very much so about the community, right? I want to make a lot of money so I can provide a good life for Cass and Lokes. And then hopefully we can have some kids and have a family. That'd be amazing. I would love that. That'd be great. I, I, you know, I've, I've had that view since I was a kid because I was raised up as an only child. And uh, let me know if anybody in the comments, let me know. Are you any, got any old, only children here? But being an only child can be really lonely as a kid. But I think it was good for me because it forced me to be extroverted. I was always a happy kid. I never, I don't ever remember not being just happy. I was always poor. Yeah, I never had a lot of stuff, but I was always happy with what I had. I had a lot of love in the home. Shout out to my mom for that. I was raised by a single mom as well. But being poor and being a single child made me realize that I had to go make my own fun because I don't, 
I'm not going to trips to Aruba. I'm not going to Bora Bora. I'm not going to Mexico in the summers. I'm not going up to the Michigan. I'm not going to Lake Michigan during the summer and riding boats and jet skis with my uncles and cousins. I'm not doing none of that. I had like one family member that had money and he was pretty detached from my side of the family. So it was like, well, go outside and play soccer or football or, you know, that that's what we did. But it forced me to become extroverted. And I think a lot of guys struggle with that nowadays. It's like being extroverted, especially like a lot of the guys that are the Gen Z kids that are straight out of high school and college now because COVID hit and you were like a senior. And then it's like, then you get into college and you're supposed to be out and about learning and like meeting people, but you're like stuck in your dorm or stuck at home. You're on a laptop. Like that really stunted a lot of people's sociological growth. And I think if you don't put yourself in uncomfortable situations, it really is hard once you get much older. So this is why I always say, Become comfortable with being uncomfortable. Go out and do things that you typically wouldn't do. The, the life that you want to live is on the other side of all the things you don't want to do. You know what I mean? You want to get rich, you got to do the work. You know, you want to live a lavish life, you got to sit there and plan the life that you want to live. And then also speak a lot of the things that you're trying to do into existence. If you're not talking like, I remember it was like seven or eight months ago, I was thinking about YouTube stuff and I was like, you know what? One day I'll have 50,000 50, subscribers. I will have 50,000 subscribers on YouTube. I will have 50,000 subscribers on YouTube. And now, boom, we've hit it. We're about to hit 70K. Shout out to you guys, by the way. Shout out to you guys. Um, or by the time this video's out, we might have already hit 70K. But you, you get the gist, right? If you don't speak these things to an, into existence, they're probably never going to happen. And you got to shoot for the stars. Like a lot of my friends, and this is a Wes, a Wes Watson quote. <laughs> if you guys know Wes, Wes Watson, he's absolutely hilarious. But like... He's talking about if you're going out in life and you're achieving all your goals, you got bitch ass goals. <laughs> you got bitch. If you're able to accomplish every single one of your goals, you got some bitch ass goals. You got to go out there and really stretch it. I was hanging out with my buddy this past weekend and he was talking about, yeah, you know, I'd like to have, I'd like to have a million dollars in 10 years. And I'm like, why not next year? He's like, next year? I'm, I'm, I don't know how I do that. I'm like, well, what if you had to make it by next year? What would you change? You'd probably change something, right? You probably try to take that that ten year plan and scrunch it down into twelve months. But the thing is, you're thinking too far out. Ten years, a million. Try to make a million in a year. Try to try to make a million in six months. Think how you can make a million in a month. That's the way you need. Like we don't have a lot of time, man. Like Gary Vee's like, bro, you're young. You know the Gary Vee meme. He's like, how old are you? Seventy five. Oh, dude, you're young. Don't even worry about it. No, we don't have a lot of time. I would love it for everybody re to retire by the time they're forty and go live the life they want to live and go do the things they want to do. Give back. You know, go build a school, go do all these things. Like I would, I would love to build a school. That'd be great, but I need capital. I need funding. I need investors, right? But I need to get to a point in my professional career where I know how to approach these people and I have some leverage and I have a reason why they should invest in me. Right. But it's like, you got to go do the work. And I'm not saying that a lot of the younger generation is lazy. I know a lot of the younger generation that that's are absolutely hustling. We got a lot of Gen Z millennial folks that like they're out there absolutely busting their butt. I know I was when I first got into sales, I was grinding it out so hard. I was cold calling eight hours a day, making 160, 80, 160, 180 calls a day, just absolutely grinding it out. And then eventually I got to a point where I could kind of scale it back a little bit and be a little bit more strategic. But in the beginning I was cutting my teeth and I was like, here's the thing. Nobody's going to come here and outwork me. You're not going to outwork me. You may outsell me. You may make more money than me, but you're not going to get here and outwork me because that effort is the one thing that you can always control. And the thing, what's funny is results respond to effort. It's a great quote. And then I heard a really good quote the other day. It was from some guy that was on the Joe Rogan experience. His name, I can't remember his name, but he had a quote that says, talk is often the substitute for action. I'll say it again for the ones in the back. Talk is often, subst an, uh, often a substitute for action. Stop talking about all the things you're going to do. Just go do it. Like Nike, just do it. Just go do it. Like you don't need to talk about every single move that you're going to make. And a lot of problems that uh, that I see a lot of people do is they come to me like on Instagram or some of my friends and they're like, Levi, I'm going to go do this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'm going to start a podcast. And I'm, blah, 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 blah. and I'm like, cool, dude. What, what actionable steps do you have? What's next for you? And they're like, well, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm like, go put out an episode tomorrow. Start today. Why are you waiting? Why are you waiting till next month? Why are you waiting till you get this? Why are you waiting till you get that? Just start. If you want to start a podcast, you could literally get on Amazon. I'm pretty sure you got a smartphone. You could get on Amazon. You could buy those little USB mics, plug it in your phone, clip it on your shirt and start a podcast. That's what I did. I wanted to start a podcast a couple years ago. And that's exactly what I did. You don't need a lot to start. 
You just need to start. Hope you guys got a lot out of today's episode, man. I was preaching today. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to cop the ebook, The Four Pillars of Personality Makes You Irresistible to Women and Respected by Men. If you have any issues with your style, go get The Four Steps to Style. It is literally the holy grail for everything style. From haircuts, what you should buy, colognes. This is a starter pack that will save you for the rest of your life. You never, you're never going to have to think about what you're going to need to buy as far as when it comes to clothes again. Um, Loki, did you have fun? It seems like he had fun today. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.